everyone. This is AJ Renee, and I hope everyone is having a great day um, or afternoon or evening, uh, whenever it is you stumble upon this video. So just some minor updates this week. Uh, nothing much to say, um, even though I say that now and then the video will end up being 30 minutes, but I'm hoping not to do that to people today. Um, I did meet with the SCORE mentor I mentioned in my last video, and I believe I provided the link for that in the description of the last video. Um, but you just go on, you fill out a short application. They just need to get an idea specifically, like what you, what it is you need, an idea of what you need specifically, excuse me, in terms of like getting your business off the ground. Um, and then once they, they have that, um, they will find you someone who is... Um, well-versed in that particular area and just to pass the knowledge on to you. It is free. And he stated, the mentor stated that we can meet as frequently or as infrequently as I felt necessary. And so the information he provided was actually very good. Um, he uh, really helped me organize a lot of things like in my mind. And so when he was talking to me, he said, you know, how are you going to do law and have a business? And I'm like, well, my goal is to eventually build this to the point where I don't have to be hands on, where I can have a team of trusted individuals who are making my things and I don't actually have to be present. And um, so he just kind of started asking certain questions and just really helped me organize it. And so he was like, oh, well, you're doing a phase approach. And he said, okay, well, this is phase one. This is phase two. This is phase three. Like, that's how you're going to write your business plan out. And then he he was like, you know, write your business plan, almost like you're writing, well, not almost, write your business plan, knowing that your audience are people who are going to give you money, right? So you're looking for grants and things like that. And he, and then he helped me because he was like, well, you're a lawyer, right? Or you're a law student. And he said, write it like a brief. He said, you're your argument is your, excuse me, your business plan is your argument as to why you should receive funding. And, you know, think of the grants, um, the, the people with the grant money as judges, and you're making your case as to why they should fund, you know, your, your business. And so that was really helpful. So the phase approach. So this is what I hope to do in phase one. This is what I hope to do in phase two. This is what I hope to do in phase three, you know, and then, you know, here's why you should provide me with some funding. And my other mentor, she was really helpful because she really opened my eyes to the idea that, you know, you just need to have your own, What's the one I'm looking for? Basically, you have to have your own unique approach, right? Um, I forgot what she called it. Almost like, um, but like, what's your niche, right? Because as a baker, first of all, I'm a novice home baker, which means I'm new at it um, in the sense of I'm not, and I'm self-taught. So I'm not trained. I'm not, you know, I haven't gone to culinary school. I haven't gone to any baking schools and, you know, so that already kind of puts me behind a lot of people. But then the reality is that there's so many people out here baking and cooking and, and doing things like you're doing them, you know, so you have to have something unique that would make people want to buy from you and not buy from somebody else. And so, you know, maybe that's donating certain proceeds to a charity or wanting to do a program or something in your community. I don't know, but it's like, um, like what's your niche and how can you incorporate that into your business plan so that your business plan becomes more attractive to the people that you are asking for funding from. So, so that was really helpful as well. So I just recommend, you know, that you get a mentor because there's a lot of different facets that just come along with, you know, getting your business off the ground. There's obviously the legal stuff and the compliance stuff and, you know, the regulations within your respective states that kind of dictate, you know, what it is that you should do. And, um, you know, you just want to make sure that you're conserving time, energy and resources by not going in the wrong direction and having to go all the way back and just kind of like start all over. So, 
Um, make sure you're getting as much help as possible and allowing people to lead you and guide you and, and give you some good advice so that you don't end up just going down a rabbit hole. And I mean, you're already going to have challenges like stepping out on your own, taking that risk is already scary. And there's already going to be things that are going to make you question whether or not you did the right thing or if you're in the right place. You don't want to add to that doing the wrong paperwork you know, going down the wrong path and then having to start all over after you've lost money, resources, and you invest a lot of time and energy in the wrong thing, you have to go back and correct that because then you'll really not want to do it. So um, make sure you're working with someone, make sure you're doing thorough research, make sure your research is specific to the state or the commonwealth in which you reside. Because again, you know, while there are some things like obviously federal, anything dealing with the federal government is going to be universal across all states, Right. But again, each state is going to have their specific um, requirements. So you don't want to focus on the wrong thing. And again, just have to start over. So um, find whoever you can find. And um, I know the gentleman that I worked with, he recommended a book to me. It's called How to Start a Business in Pennsylvania. And he said, it's actually a book like that. It's a series where there's one for each state. So if you live in the state of Maine, you can research how to start it. Uh, uh, you can research how to start a business in Maine, or maybe you live in North Dakota, how to start a business in North Dakota. And the, the, the book should pop up and it'll have forms specific to your state, um, as well as, you know, certain laws, I guess, that are relevant. This is from what he told me. I ordered mine. I don't have it yet. When I get it, I'll share a little bit more. Um, but you know, he told me that there's information in there about taxes, which is something I really need help with. And so, you know, you just want to make sure, again, you're getting it right and that you're in compliance because you don't want anything small and technical to come and bite you back in the butt later because this is a huge undertaking to try to do business on your own and to survive, you know, off of what you're able to produce. And then for something as small as, not having the right form filled out to come back and set you back. You know, it's just, if you can avoid it, you know, avoid it. But I'll post the link to how to start a business in Pennsylvania in the chat. Um, so if anybody is in the state of Pennsylvania, you know, you can check that out if you want. And then lastly, um, what I just signed up for was learn to serve. Now, I know the big one is serve safe. Um, serve safe. I've been hearing it for quite some time and, you know, people have taken it themselves and they're recommending it because it's a good program. Um, however, I was also one, I wanted to just do some research just to make sure it was legit. Right. Um, I wanted to make sure it was a certified program. And so I was doing some research and they were saying that you need to have, so Specific to the state of Pennsylvania, again, there's a website for the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, and they'll give you the laws and the requirements in terms of what you need to have for your food establishment. So in Pennsylvania, they have a code, um, um, Title Three, Section 6501 through 6510. And it's the, the Pennsylvania, excuse me, the yeah Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture Food Employee Certification Act, and basically requires that one employee per licensed food facility is to obtain a nationally recognized food manager certification. So that's one person within one facility. So say you own five businesses because you're building a franchise. That one person cannot cover all five. You have to have one in each for a total of five certified food managers, okay? Um, and the program has to be approved through the ANSI, which is the American National Standard Institute, using the Conference of Food Protection Certified Food Protection Manager Standards. So if you see a program that has ANSI hyphen CFP, that's a good program for you to use because that means your curriculum, that means the curriculum and the proctored exams or the exams are um, um, accredited. So you want to make sure you do that. Now, in Pennsylvania, through the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, they will have a list. And I'll actually list this page too because I, I did the, the uh, page for um, the... Oh, I'm drawing a blank. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, somebody help me. <laughs> um, the limited food establishment registration or like permit application. 
Uh, I did the link to that one in the last video, but th this time I'll link the page for the food employee certification information. Um, now, there are exemptions to this policy. Like everyone is not required to have it. And technically, there's for me, because I'm not going to be producing temperature controlled foods because I'm not allowed, um, technically, I don't need it. But if you are, you know, if you want to be more marketable, because you know how we are as a society, everybody likes documentation. Granted, you have people with all kinds of degree certifications and everything else under their name and their trash, you know, and then you can have people who absolutely meet none of those qualifications, but who actually excel, you know, in this particular area because that's their gifting. You know what I mean? So I personally try not to put all of my stake in, you know, documents and things like that and degrees. They're very important. I just don't think it's the end all be all to, you know, the quality work that somebody can produce. You know what I'm saying? But at any rate, you also have to be not at any rate, but you also have to be a realist and understand that you're going to get further with people because people just like paperwork and documentation. So even though I'm technically not required to have this, um, if there's five exemptions to this law. Um, they still recommend and encourage you to get it. And I mean, not only that, again, the principle behind all of this is you want to make sure you're not making people sick. I know for me, when I go out to a restaurant, I want to trust that I can just sit down and have a meal and not worry about getting sick, not worried about, you know, throwing up or anything like that. And so, you know, I'm just, you know, we have to, you know, as a person who wants to be a food establishment, I have to make sure I'm, you know, on the same thing and having all my, you know, eyes dotted and my T's crossed. Um, because I just, I want people to look at me and say like, this is a place that I can trust. I know she's handling her food well. And not to mention the fact that I'm doing this out of my home. So, you know, it's one thing to have a certified commercial, you know, licensed, you know, facility. Um, but I don't have that. And so this is just one more layer of, um, not just protection, but in terms of like marketing, you know, I, I need to have more going for me than I have going against me. And having these certifications um, will definitely be helpful. And I don't know if they'll like um, put you like on a database or something, say, yeah, they're licensed through this program. But I know there's certain like certifications that you have to keep posted at all times for the public to see. And so for me, like, for example, my permit is in my window facing the street in my kitchen so that anybody who comes past it should be able to at least maybe not clearly, but they should see that there's a certification and a permit information that, you know, that I am, you know, in compliance with these things. So, um, but yeah, so I'll post a link to that as well. And they had, um, within this website, a list, um, it's called the FEC course listing. So food employee certification listing. It's a PDF document that shows, um, all the different organizations that kind of that host some kind of program or training. And I have seen for me, but again, everybody kept telling me serve safe. And I, I believe that's a great program, you know, and if that's what you want to do, do it, you know. Um, but there are other options that were available and I didn't realize that. Now I did see like the 360 training somewhere and I'm like, okay, what is this? And I learned that they have what they call a learn to serve training uh, program that you can get a certification through. And um, it was cheaper. And again, because I don't have a lot of money right now and I'm, you know, taking this risk, I want to save as much money as I can. So I actually signed up for two trainings. One was the, the food manager training and that was $99. And then I signed up for um, food delivery because I I don't want a bunch of people at my house because this is my actual place of residence. Like this is where I live. And, you know, just as a young single woman, well, even if I wasn't single, I still don't want people snooping around my family. You know what I mean? And just being here when they don't have to be. Um, because again, you have to be mindful of safety and as optimistic as we are about the world, you know, there's a lot of trash people out there, crazy people out there, and you just don't want to risk putting your family in danger. So I wanted to do deliveries um, and with the deliveries, there's a training that comes with that because, you know, again, you're trying to keep down food borne illnesses. You want to make sure that even your delivery space, you know, or like your car or the truck or whatever, um, is in compliance with the, the rules so that, you know, you're not 
you may have a great kitchen, your kitchen is phenomenal, but then something gets onto a box or something while you put it in your car and somebody could still end up getting sick. So I signed up for the two of those and that one was $28. So that already saved me at least 40 bucks because I think the serve safe training I had saw uh, some time ago was 165 and then there was another one with a proctored exam that was, uh, I don't know if it was 179 or 197. It was closer to 200. And um, so I was like, you know, if I can learn the same thing because they're both certified through the ANSI, that I'm going to take what's cheaper, you know, and still learn what I need to learn and be in compliance with the, the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. So that's the next thing that I'm working on. Um, I haven't started the trainings yet because one, I just signed up for it. Um, I, I recorded this video May 3rd. Um, technically, it was May 3rd when I signed up because I was up past midnight. But um, so I just signed up for it technically this morning and I still have two um, papers to write for school, but I'm going to get those out the way and um, make sure that I am, um, you know, handle what, you know, my priorities first, and then I'll go in and do the training. But I did do like one because they had like a free COVID-19 training. And granted, I could have passed that without even going through the class because it's literally regurgitating what you hear every single day. Um, and so, but it's just, it's a, just an option for those who are interested in having a food establishment and you want a more reasonable option. Um, so obviously I'm an individual um, and I'll be working by myself. So I have to have the training. <laughs> um, and then um, there's options for groups. Like if you need them to come in and train or technically I think learn 360, or excuse me, learn to serve through 360 training is all online, but I think they give you a group rate and stuff like that. So I don't know how much it would cost for you to do that um, because I obviously don't have any employees. So, but that's still an option that you have. And again, if you want to do serve safe, actually there was an article on 360training.com under the Learn to Serve program that spoke about serve safe. And they also, you know, say that it's a very good program. And, um, but, you know, there's some little nuances and you just have to know what those are for yourself. Um, so other than that, I think um, I don't have any more updates. Um, sorry, I got a little blanket here because my legs are cold. But um, yeah, other than that, I don't have any updates. Um, this shirt looks like it's choking me, which I'm not really sure why. And <laughs> um, I guess in terms of just a life update, um, I actually decided to stop using my treadmill as a closet. And... I'm going to try to do the couch to 5k again. I did that years ago and ran my first 5k years ago. And then I just figured, you know, I miss running. I want to try it again. So um, in addition to getting my business off the ground, I'm really doing my best to take my health and wellness serious because I had a dream where I was like 284 pounds and I'm like, God, I really do not want to get that heavy. And so I had to stop avoiding the scale and, um, you know, and acknowledge that, you know, I just kind of let myself go and I um, needed to get my life, my physical health and stuff situated. So um, I, I decided to exercise last night and I, it's empty, but I've been, I started juicing again, went to Sam's Club and got a bunch of fruits and vegetables to juice and, you know, just hoping to get my life back, my energy back, you know, my body back. Cause honey, my waist was getting snatched. You hear me? And then COVID snatched it right back. And then I just been adding fuel to the fire and, you know, I just want my face back. And there's nothing wrong with being chubby if that's you. But for me, you know, I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen the promised land and I want to go back there. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, other than that, no real updates. Um, I had to stop meeting with my therapist because my insurance changed. And so I have to find another therapist um, that specializes in ADHD because that's also been a little interesting and um, I want to get that back under control. So, you know, but we're, we're here. I'm here, excuse me, living life and just doing the best that I can. And, uh, you know, just I intend to keep Keep on pushing and taking things one day at a time because that's really all that we can do, you know. And so, um, 
yeah, so that's all I have for you all today. I managed to get under 20 minutes, but y'all have a blessed day <laughs> um, and a blessed week. Um, and remember, do something special for yourself. And, you know, do something special for somebody else. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a generous person. Um, and, you know, just giving, just blessing somebody and then encouraging them to pay it forward so they can bless somebody else and then you can continue in that cycle of generosity. So y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.